Uh, this is what happens to one of his kind of talks back to a real American. Arrest. Hey, it's Apex Comics. This is my, uh, my grab bag find from Second and Charles from like a couple of weeks ago, but finally I'm recording it. So, <laughs> I think this was displayed in, uh, can't remember. Maybe it was um, Cartoonist Kayfabe. I can't remember where I saw this this video where he just played this book. Man, I had to grab it because <laughs> he's probably gobbling up. Now Star Squadron's a pretty good title, and you know, you know, art like Rick Hoberg and yeah, you got Roy Thomas writing it. Oh, Roy Thomas is to appear May seventh at um, at that Mile High Comics place. Yeah, where um, Chuck Rosansky uh, slash Betty Pages uh, owns the store. Yeah. So, yeah, here we go. Detroit is dynamite! <laughs> oh, I'm going to peruse some of this. Rick Holberg, man. That's some good work. This is one of his best, I think. All the Star Squadron, in my opinion. He did a great job in Godzilla. I've met him a few times. Got a few signatures. You know, I see him like almost every year at the Comic Cons in Seattle. He's a really cool guy. And here we go. All Star Squadron number, what, 39? Yeah. You know, the thanks that they get releasing him, and this is the thanks they that the All Star Squadron gets from Amazing Man. Well, Amazing Man was originally a Bill Everett character. And. Yeah, I guess they made it a World War II character. Uh, you have a different race, of course. You know, he's a black man. But yeah, it's a good character anyway. I don't care. But yeah, this is like... <laughs> uh, well, you make you make your own judgment. <laughs> you make your, uh, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> But yeah, this is crazy. This is, they don't. They would, they would never. DC and Marvel would never publish any, anything like this ever again. They would never. I mean, current Marvel or DC, they would not. They would not even touch it. But yeah, it happened. You know, it's events. It's history, man. It definitely is. So let's get back to get down to Black Hawk. Beautiful Dave Cockrum cover. Of course, I met Dave Cockrum in Seattle in the late 90s. He signed uh, quite a few X-Men books, which is, I'm sure, will go up in value. And he's, he's very, we got talking for a while, talk about doing you know, influences and things like that, and what I was doing. You know, he's pretty good, pretty cool guy, God rest his soul. But, yeah, it's a beautiful cover. And inside, uh, you got, his art's okay. But you, you got like Dan Spiegel is like one of my least favorite artists. <laughs> yeah, him and Don Heck, they're they're the same category in my opinion. But I know Don Heck is good, but yeah, Dan Spiegel, eh, his faces look so awkward and weird. Like all kind of, you know, I don't know, a little doughy or something, something weird about it. But eh, hey, he worked in comics, that's fine. All right, now we get to. I like to find uh, scarce comics, some different, some you don't see every day. You got the Eagle, Death's Head, number twenty, and Dark Mirror. Yeah. Oh, Reflection in the Dark Mirror. I haven't, I haven't really read much of the Eagle, but he's like a martial arts character. There's some good ones here. Um, who did the art? I don't know. I don't see any. I don't see any uh, credits, but that's pretty cool. Do we get another story, or is this gonna be a bunch of ads? No, you get a backup. Ooh, this is cool. That's it. Anything? Anyone who's um. 
any upper comers from the black and white era do his work in the mainstream I'm not sure oh I don't recognize any of these guys but it's kind of cool yeah let's get to um, fantasy Apple comics go Apple comics Oh yeah, but yeah, this is a Captain Obese. This is a character that dates pre Cecil. Ah, uh, wow! <laughs> Who would have thought? But yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. But if you, I think Cash Grab is still on. If you want to go ahead and buy a copy of Cash Grab before Cecil, go Cecil. Yeah, there you go. Nothing going on. This is kind of cool. Some shading. Little gray tones here. Oh, Hunter Ski. Oh, this is early Dave Hoover art before he appeared on Captain America. And the, I think the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Some early work there. And we get issue number seven of Fantasy. Fantasy of Reality. Let's take a look. Wow. Your sci-fi basic stuff. Oh. Nice good shading. Good black and white stuff. Let's get to the flash. It's a Carmine Infantino. Some art. And uh Carrie Bates. Right. Carmine Infantino's been on this title. Off and on, since I think the late 50s. <laughs> this is it's 1982. But you get a good inker on him as well. He can actually produce some great work. Yeah. I was never really into Carmen Infantino, but, you know, I'm really appreciating more of his stuff now. Oh, it's also decent. Was, is this an ad? No. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Always got the Pied Piper. Ooh. All right, let's go on to, uh, well, Gen 13. Early J. Scott Campbell work. Yeah, those eyes, those big eyes. That's how you draw big eyes. They want to get someone that draws similar to Jim Lee, but yet their own style and uh, that's where J. Scott Campbell came in after the She in 13 miniseries, 1 through 4, which is, I think, uh, you know, yeah, I think Jim Lee originally drew it, didn't he? Did he not? Correct me on the comments below if you happen to see this video, or just comment, period. I'm not getting any, barely any comments on my recent videos. I really would appreciate it. Please like and subscribe, ring bell for notifications. So that way you won't miss an episode of Apex After Dark each week. And my videos, of course. Oh, this is cool. We got Pitt in here? Holy shoot. I did not realize that. He's got a Pitt. Pitt appears in this book. Holy crap. Well, there you go. I only bought this for like 95 cents, believe it or not. Look, look at it. That's insane. All right, let's get to. Uh, oh, it's it's Ethan. Well, I was watching Jerk Comic, the tail end of the show, and uh, yeah, it's about this one guy who's uh, a ripoff artist of uh, these toys. I forget his name, but Uncle Jerk mispronounced Ethan Van Skyver. He called him Ethan Van Scriver. Look, there's no R in there, <laughs> and he mentioned. On in the chats, uh oh, I'm gonna get a lot of crap from EBS fans. <laughs> they might, they might like produce like a lot of dislikes in this video because I mispronounced his name. I said, don't look. And he also he admits that he's not very good at pronouncing names. But you know, hey, I forget the guy. I like Uncle Jerk. I like Jerk Comic. Jerk Comic has a really good uh, video series of different. Uh, you know, writers and artists and all that good stuff and controversies. So, hey, give him a look. 
give him a little subscribe. He's a good guy. But yeah, this is beautiful work, man. All this detail. And of course, the cyber frog stuff really pops out even more. Because, well, it, you know, it takes more time to do. We all know that. That's why he's a year late. <laughs> but he's been doing all this live streaming stuff. And that would slow anyone down. So, hey, I'm not going to fault him. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. Slightly damaged. I bought it for, like, cover price. It's not bad. This is actually an awesome, beautiful John Bogdanovy cover of Superman Man Steel number six. Man, look at that booty. Look at this this wild looking guy. Long torso. Yeah. And they got Superman. I guess he lost his memory and he's on a desert island. <laughs> this is a crazy plot line going. I had to grab it. That was only like a couple of dollars. Uh, so anyway, oh, we got, oh, where's the island girl? Oh, that's, that's cool. All right. Yeah, there you go. Got a big, giant, got a stegosaurus. Oh, it's like, when do they hook up? Oh. Hey, oh, ooh, there you go. Hmm. I, so I think the Guardian's going to look for Superman, I think. I don't know. Who knows? I don't want to show. That's pretty cool. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I've got Thunder Bunny. Number nine. Dreams of a Rabbit Fiend. Anybody's familiar with Thunder Bunny? Well, maybe not everyone. But he came out in... What, what year? Oh, an I-87, yeah. Apple Press. The big, burgeoning, booming of black and white comics. Can you dig it, folks? I, I like it. You know, if you can't afford the coloring, you might as well just go black and white. Make sure it's strong art and a great story, too. I mean, look at Walking Dead, for example. Yeah, and other comics. Uh, oh... Well, Nexus was, wasn't Nexus black and white when it came out? I think it did. Yeah, when Capital Comics. That's that's a good one. And, you know, a bunch of others. I can't think of it right now, but... Oh, well, of course, Cerebus. If you're into Cerebus. Well, here we go. Some early work of Wolf's Portacio. We got X-Factor 64. X-Factor 64. Yeah. There we go. I think this is Sunfire. It looks like a revved up looking Sunfire, man. It's a nice uh, two page spread. Good stuff. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. All right, let's get on to 65. It continues on to there. The X Factor, the Wolf's Potash. Oh man, nice two page spread. One and then a big old two page spread like Jack Kirby started all that. <laughs> Everyone else followed. Wow. All these ads, it's crazy. Hey, yeah. All right. Let's get on to another X Factor. This is a uh, guest artist before Larry Stroman appeared in 71. Yeah. And guest artist is Kurt Jarvin. And anybody heard of him? Uh, no. Joe Rubenstein makes anyone look good on inks. Oh. He's the one that brought in Dale Keown to Marvel. Joe Rubenstein. He's, yeah, forgot or didn't know. And we've enjoyed Dale Keown's beautiful work. 
recently and in the past. Wow, so good. But yeah, uh, not bad. And we get on to, of course, X Factor 71. Yes, that introduces, well, Larry Stroman. Well, he's, Larry Stroman drew, uh, alien, oh, what's it, the alien, um, alien nation, oh, shit, what's the name of that title? Oh, please mention in the <laughs> chat, or in the comments. Oh, it's an alien book. <laughs> That's from, um, oh, Epic comics a marvel was marvel independent titles yeah those create our own titles yeah that weird slither aliens in that book <sighs> ooh it's a good book so it's pretty cool Gotta love the old Larry Strowman. I think he's actually um he has a uh he has some pages in that Graham Nolan's two giant size two fisted manly tales. You catch some later latest Larry Strowman works. There you go. Alright. You got seventy two. Yeah, that's seventy three. That's 74. So everyone, please like and subscribe. Ring bell for notifications. This is your friend, Apex Comics. This week, as of this recording, I'll have Rich Ayala's Roach Balls Apex After Dark this coming uh, Saturday night slash Sunday morning at midnight Central Standard Time. You'll be able to catch it. Anyway, have a beautiful week. Happy Easter. Ciao for now.